بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على الموث رحمة للعالمين نبينا وحبيبنا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد اليوم خمسة من شهر ربيع الأول 1443 الموافق ل 11 من شهر 10 2021 نواصل درسنا في هذا الكتاب المبارك الداء والدواء أسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يبارك فينا وفيما نتعلمه وأن يغفر لنا الزلات ويرفع المؤلف درجته في العليين So today إن شاء الله we will be dealing with uh, the explanation given by Ibn Qayyim about uh, these uh, major and minor sins Last class we talk about the opinions of the scholars concerning the major sins. Are they known in it to us? You know, the number, the amount is known to us, or it is something that is uh, hidden. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, kept the de definition to be uh, in nature, not in number. As in, you know, we know how many major sins are there. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just describes them to us in a way we just have to follow the description, which is the best opinion, insha'Allah ta'ala. We have heard that uh, scholars and companions like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Abdullah ibn Amr, Abdullah ibn Umar, you know, they all have their own opinion attributed to them, which says that they are known to us by number. But when you look at the Sunnah of the Prophet, وسلم, it goes against. Uh, these uh, opinions so most likely they are talking about a specific type of major major sins not all of all of them يقول ابن القيم رحمه الله وقال ابو الطيب وقال ابو طالب المكي ابو الطيب he says ابو طالب المكي said he says جمعتها من اقوال الصحابه فوجدتها اربعة في القلب you know ابو طالب ابو طالب المكي said i gather the sins, you know, from the statement of the scholars, and I found them as the following. Number one, arba'atun fil qalb. You know, four, they are all practiced by the heart. Four of these sins are all practiced by the heart. Wahiya shirku billah. And shirk is practiced by the, by the heart. Wal israru al al-ma'asiyah. And also insisting you know, not repenting from the sin. That's al Isra al Masiya. You're committing sin and you're not willing to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because this one is is, is major sin. The scholar said, La Sahirata Ma'al Isra. Uh, if a person is insisting to commit uh, the sin, this uh, uh, lack of uh, tawbah can turn the minor sin into a major, major sin. Because it's the rejection of the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from the from the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, he says, number one, he says, I found the basis of the sin among, uh, I mean, according to the statements of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to be four bases. Number one is the heart. And the sins that are committed by the heart, the main one, the root of those sins which are committed by the heart are the shirk. Well, israru al masiyah And also a person who insists, you know, not willing to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْقُنُوطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ And also being in a state of despair from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, how can a person live in this way? But unfortunately, many, many, many of us nowadays, we have this قُنُوط مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ is so confusing and as such, a person, you know, lose hope, you know. So we come through a lot and also we cannot resist and show a submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the calamity strikes us. So Allah says, لا تخلطوا من رحمة الله Don't you ever be despair, in a state of despair of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَالْأَمْنُ مِنْ مَكْرِ And also be in a state of peace from the, the makr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his punishment. It means you don't care. It means you don't care. And you know that, yes, this is an act of uh, sin and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punishes the one who does that, that you don't care, you know. That this is one of the worst type of uh, desensitization, you know, that a person is 
detached from the sense that he has which is always helping him to stay away from that which is inappropriate. So the last one to remove this then that is no point of having life in this in this body, you know. So you need it for you to survive. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walo anna ahla qura amanu wa taqaw la fatahna alayhim barakatim min as-sama'i wal ard walakin kathabu fa akhadnahum bima kanu yaksibun. He talks about the people of the city. You know, after he mentioned those whom he destroyed because of their bad manners and attitude. And then he talked to us, you know, as a conclusion to that which he had mentioned. He says, those people, had they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, we will definitely open for them the blessings from the heavens and the earth. You know, subhanAllah, they will get the barakah from everywhere. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا Unfortunately, they, they <coughs> refuse to believe. They deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His existence. They deny Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of going against his laws. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And we got them because of their evil manners and attitude. And then he says, أَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَاتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Do the people of the city, you know, become in a state of peace of the, the, the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to visit them بَيَاتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ When they were sleeping. You know, the worst type of punishment is to be visited by the punishment and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you are sleeping. Because that was a time of rest. You expect your body to take enough rest. And uh, normally a person is in the state of peace. He doesn't think of anything to happen to him at that moment, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do they think that, you know, everything is okay, you know, they are in the state of peace, you know. Why are they having that kind of mentality that they don't care, you know? And that's exactly what, what happens, you know? They don't care. They don't care. So Allah says, أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَاتًا وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ أَوَا أَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا ضُحًا وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ Or they, they agree with the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to visit them. ضُحًا وَهُمْ يَلْعَبُونَ In the early morning. You know, early morning people come for exercise. Yeah, people are playing, you know, one of the best time for enjoyment, you know. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, either this or that, you know. But in general, what kind of message are they sending Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ SubhanAllah. All they agree with the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to visit them. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, nobody ever agrees with the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come and visit him except the real losers in this life. He Allah, whoever agree with the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to visit him is the real loser. But my question is, people of this contemporary era, are we in this status or not? You know, are we really away from this kind of mentality or we are thinking in the same way the predecessors the bad one used to think. Riba is rampant, zina, you know, uh, illegal relationship and uh, bribe, all of these things which, you know, some, subhanAllah, some of these things, you know, a nation was destroyed because of them, you know. And nowadays you do have some people who lost their aql and their consciousness will try to even tell you that there is something which supposed those kind of bad and illegal relationship in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the sunnah of Allah or in the sharia in general. You have people who will speak about this illegal relationship, homosexuality and same-sex same sex marriage, looking at it as freedom, which Islam also condone or might condone. That's the status of the ummah nowadays. So that's why I'm asking this question, are we really away from this, you know, mentality, which, uh, uh, yani, earned the predecessors the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They were destroyed, almost all of them, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَكُلَّنَا أَخَذْنَا بِذَنْبِهِ فَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ أَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِ حَاصِبًا Until the end of the ayah. So look at the status of Ummah and make a decision. But since you can't just fix the Ummah like that, 
And as such, I advise each and every one of us to monitor his own activities and whatever he does. Make sure that you are doing the correct thing. Make sure that you advise your, 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 your children, you know, to fix themselves. Make sure you advise your family, your wife, you know, uh, your husband, you know. Make sure you advise the people who are surrounding you to do the right thing, to behave well. If you fix yourself, I fix myself, my friend fix himself, everyone fix himself, be the light Allah, the world is going to be fixed. And then we will be able, all of us and collectively, to engage in the da'wah and bring uh, peace to the Muslim communities. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, أَفَأَمِنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ فَلَا يَأْمَنُوا مَكْرَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ if he sees somebody who agrees with the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come and visit him, you know, if you're looking for a real loser, this is the real loser, you Allah. But as I said, look at your attitude. Are you willing to repent? You know, almost everything you're doing is based on riba except a few. And sometimes we do it intentionally or unintentional. The system is based on corruption. And we engage deeply in it and we find those people who lost credibility between them and the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will legalize it in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's why a Muslim should be very careful. Life has a purpose and every single person is supposed to keep this purpose in, intact. To do that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded them to do and to make sure that they please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the real purpose of life. And whatever contradicts this purpose, you should stay away from it. And be patient, my dear brothers and sisters. Wallahi, be patient. You know, this coronavirus comes, you know, uh, how long, I mean, did the coronavirus stay with us? Almost two years? No, I guess, around two years. How many people lost their life? You know, it's the best example for us and a message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to each and every one of us that death can come at any moment. You know, those people before the existence of this disease, you know, many of them has big and longer hope, you know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took them back to him, you know. That's life. This is the reality of life. And it tells you that this place is not a place for you to come and, you know, relax and think that everything should just be based on, uh, what do you call, enjoyment, you know. So that's how the make us, you know, think nowadays. You just have to enjoy life. You just have to be so lenient. You just have to be uh, having the so-called, you know, uh, wasatiyah according to that term. Because wasatiyah means to follow Allah SWT precisely and to follow Rasulullah SAW. Because the religion of Allah is not difficult. Wallahi, whoever tells you that there is something from the Sunnah of the Prophet SAW that is hard and difficult, you know, that person is wrong. Either he doesn't know what the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is all about, or he is lying. He just wants to detach you from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And we have a lot of people like this, you know, making videos, thinking that they are doing things in the correct way, but they are pushing Muslims away from the right practices. Whatever you do almost, if you are following the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, as long as there are some people who are opposing you, then you will become what? Extremists, you know. SubhanAllah. That's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa talked about patience. And if you look at the predecessors, you know, you know, subhanAllah, they really understand, understood what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa meant by the patience. And they had the patience, you know. One of them told us that when you want to succeed in this life, make sure that whatever you do is based on the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He says, فَلَا تَلْبَسْ إِذَا أَحْبَبْتَ أَنْ يَسْلَمَ لَكَ دِينُكَ he said, when, when you know, you know, uh, I'm sorry, in Allah bi sunnah fa'al. He said, if you can make your life like this, even wearing your shoes, you have some sunnah that you are relating it to it. The way you're putting it, the way you're taking it out, you know, you, you, you view some of the practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa That's the best way of life. And don't worry about the comment by others. Don't harm others. And if you're following precisely the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, nobody will be hurt. But you have some people who are the enemies of the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. They do not practice it and they don't let people practice. Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is based on gentleness, leniency, softness, if we follow it correctly. Not according to our own term. Because as I said, wasatiyah in our time means 
to be between haram and halal. You're neither with haram, you're neither with hara halal. Sometimes you do this, sometimes you do that. You condone this, you tolerate this. And that was not the risala of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You Allah, uqsimu billah, it wasn't the risala of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The risala of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is very clear, which is based on hadith of Al-Nu'man ibn Bashir. Al-Halal ubayyin, wal-Haram ubayyin, wa baynahum a'murun mushtabihat. He says, halal is clear, and haram is clear. Otherwise, if that is what we're supposed to be doing, then what is the point of having all of these ayat in the Quran? Don't, 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 don't. Although the don'ts are not a lot, you know. But Allah doesn't want them. Why can't we stay away from them? Since He doesn't like it. Why can't we stay away from them, you know? And the manhaj of Rasulullah is precisely the interpretation of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As I always mention to you, somebody was right when he says, uh, if wasatiya is based on you between, being between halal and haram, then Abu Talib should be one of those uh, uh, people in Jannah long ago. Because he follows that kind of wasatiya, because he neither accepts Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and accepted the faith, and he also, uh, uh, I mean, no, no, uh, neither accepted nor rejected uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not accept and did not reject. So he did not reject the kuffar and he did not reject Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was in the middle. You know, he was in the middle. The link between the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and uh, and the Quraysh when it comes to reconciliation, he accepts the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he has some, in, within his consciousness and his fitra, fitra that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was right. But just to accept him and follow him, he's not ready yet, and it doesn't benefit him. You know, that kind of wasatiya doesn't benefit him. So, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that you follow the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu correctly. Stay away from titles. You know, make sure that what you're doing has some has a root from the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Afa aminu makarallah, falaya amaru makarallah illa qawm al khasir. Do we agree with the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to visit us? And we should know that nobody will be in this kind of agreement except a real loser. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tilkal Quran qussu alayka min anba'iha. You know, Allah talks about those nations, you know, subhanAllah, as a blessing from Him to narrate to us, you know, the story of those people so that we can take lesson. We need that kind of lesson, although we don't take that lesson, but wallahi, we need it. Allah says, Wa ma wajadna li akhtharihim min ahdin, wa in wajadna akhtharahum la fasikin. Allah says, we did not find the vast majority of the nations, you know, holding upon the covenant between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we definitely found the vast majority of them following the wrong way. That's the answer to anyone who says, if you are believing that this is the correct way, then what would you say with the vast majority of the people who are against you? You know, we have this statement, if I'm correct, then it means that the rest of the people are wrong. And as such, we take this as the justification for us to go in the wrong way. Why? Because we think if we are claiming that we are right, then the vast majority of the people are wrong then. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, in Surah Al-An'am, He says, When tutay aktharaman fil ardi dhulluka an sabilillah. In Surah Al-Araf, he says, مَا وَجَدْنَا لِأَكْثَرِهِمْ مِنْ أَهْدِ The vast majority of the people are not those who are holding upon the truth. So, batil is more than the truth on earth, up to date. Up to date, batil is more than the truth. The adherence to the truth is lesser, way lesser than those people who are adhering to the, uh, to the, to the batil. So don't major your religion by how many people are following. Don't you ever do that. Otherwise, you will go and lose in the way they lost. You know, don't you ever major your correctness by how many people are doing the same thing you are doing. Major your correctness by how much you follow the Prophet wasallam and how much that understanding is correct through the scholars, the real scholars. 
Do they understand that or not? And those people who I'm talking about, the scholars, you know, referring to the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu and the Tabi'in and the Tabi'i Tabi'i, those were the people who know better than anybody else because they are the closest people to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Either they saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Mubasharatan directly doing the thing, or they took from those who saw Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and put it in, into action. So that should be, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 the scale you use to measure your correctness, whether you're right or you're wrong. Not how many people are doing it, not how many people agree with you, not how many people accept you. Let it be nobody accepted you. It's okay, it's fine, it's fine. As long as you are doing it correctly, let it be nobody agree. Ibrahim salam lived in the place. Nobody was with him except Lut and, and his wife. SubhanAllah. Lut salam was in a place nobody accepted him. You know, almost everyone is homosexual. A'udhu billah and lesbians, you know. And Qutta uh, turq you know, all kinds of evil are in that place, you know. Qutta turq means those people who intercept the caravan and the thieves and, and the stealers, you know. That was the job, apart from the shirk and disobedience. Introducing new things which nobody ever did it before them. Imagine you're living in that community, you are alone. And he doesn't care. Never say that, no, am I sure what I'm doing is correct because almost everyone is not doing it? No. Until the time he left, until the time Allah destroyed them, some scholars mentioned that the only people who accepted him were his two daughters. It doesn't matter to those prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and all of them succeeded in life. All of them succeeded in life. One of the prophets, nobody accepted him. Nobody, nobody accepted him. He went back to Allah. At least Lut has two. At least Ibrahim has his wife and some other and then later on he got some people and later on many people also accepted their religion but that was a prophet who went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with nobody what would you say about that if you think that yes you have to be accepted by everyone what do you think about that prophet you know so my dear brothers and sisters just be very careful wallahi we have to be very careful and as I said the only thing that helps you to succeed in this test Make sure that you understand your job in this life. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is creating you? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create you? Make sure you understand this. And make sure that you give all the priority to this. Whatever you do in this life, if it is not in line with this purpose of life, you should keep it aside and throw it away. It will take you to nowhere, wallahi, except to hawiya, to jahannam. If you take away the purpose of life and you follow your own desire, that might not lead that might lead you to how we are to Jahannam. So make sure that this life is temporary. No matter how much you live, a day will come, my dear brothers and sisters. You will be taken out of this life, whether we like it or we don't like it, back to where? To accountability. And you know the hisab of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taqiq. Taqiq means it's so subtle and so accurate, you know. Things that you never imagined somebody to keep record on them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept record on them. You even forgot them, Allah will remind you. And you will remember that yes, you did. Every single thing you are doing in this life is perfect, perfectly d documented and recorded. So let's build our, our here after and make sure that we make the best place for, for ourselves when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Qala wal amnu min makrillah. So I was just referring to those ayat. And uh, I try to link them with our own status, our life nowadays. So these are the, the sins. Abu Talib al-Makki said, I found, uh, I found the vast majority of the statements of the companions concerning the major sins are based on four roots. You know. Number one is the, the heart. I found four things on the heart. Okay? I found four things on the heart. You know, I found four things on the heart. A shirk billah, committing shirk, and also insisting, you know, on sin, not repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wal qanut min rahmatillah, and also having despair in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wal amnu min makrillah, and being in a state of peace from the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means thinking that everything is fine. You know, you continue to commit the sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't mind. And he said, I found also four on the tongue. So four on the heart and four on the, on the tongue. What are these four? 
false testimony. You never witness something and you claim that you witness it. You know, as I said, nowadays we have, you know, people who are willing to be paid so that they can have this uh, false testimony, you know, to get money, you know, subhanAllah, buying hell by themselves, you know, buying hell by themselves. Because if a person is doing this and Allah SWT did not forgive him, where does it go? The Prophet Sallallahu said, Well, kadib yahdi ila nar. Lying leads to nowhere except hell, the Prophet Sallallahu said. So, shahada to zur. You know, so that's why in this life, don't you ever talk about something which you don't know. You know, uh, when you want to uh, give your testimony, make sure that it is based on something that you saw with your own eyes, not based on somebody, not, not based on what somebody told you. If you want to talk about what somebody told you, then you should give the testimony like that. Fulan, so and so and so, person told me this. Don't say I witness something that you know you do not witness it. Qala shahada zur. That's the first one is shahada zur. وَقَذْفُ الْمُحْسَنَاتِ And also falsely accusing a muhsana. Muhsana means a good and decent woman, a person who claimed that she committed zina. Her right have to be preserved. You know. Sooner or later, the government should preserve her right. If they don't, on the day of judgment, the file is going to be reopened again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those people who do that, they are cursed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya and the akhirah. Well, Yameen al Ghamus. Al Yameen al Ghamus is the false uh, oath. Somebody swears by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing that he is lying in his statement. He says, Wallahi, it is like this. And he knows it is not like that. That's what is called Al Yameen al Ghamus. Some scholars said it doesn't even carry kafara because it leads to hell. You know. Some, some scholars said فِنَّارِ Because it, I mean, uh, put deep down the one who bears it into hell. You know. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really hates it. And somebody who is doing this, you know, will be one of those people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not even speak to them on the day of judgment. You know, they are so insignificant and they are so evil in their attitude in the way they will not even have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking to them. sihr and also the magic. So these are the four he found on the tongue. He found four on the heart and he found four on the tongue. Those on the heart, shirk, al-israr, al-ma'siyah, al-amnu min makrillah, al-qanut min rahmatillah. And those he found on the tongue, he said, Shaharat al Zur, and Qadf al Muhsanat al Ghafilat, and also Al Yamin al Ghamus al Sihr. So those that he found on the, on the tongue. And he found three being committed by the stomach Shurb al Khamr, drinking wine. Drinking wine. Which is strictly prohibited Islamically, and wine is Kullu Makhamar al Aqal. Whatsoever causes the, the brain to be covered is called wine. Whatsoever covers, I mean, the brain is called wine. So it is not necessarily that uh, wine should be something in the form of liquid. No, no it could be anything. The air that somebody inhale or whatever. The point is to do something that will disturb the the faculty in the brain that execute the ta'aqqul. Because the aqal comes from the heart and pass the information to the brain to be executed. So if you have something that covers that part of the brain which is the executor of the ta'aqqul, you know, that thing is called khamr. Al-khamr ma'khamr al-aql. And that person who does that shall receive the punishment of 40 or 80 lashes. So that's why wine is not permissible in all circumstances except when there is necessity and we are sure that by taking the wine the necessity will be gone. Necessity means life-threatening situations. 
and eating and consuming the wealth of an orphan. We talk about this last time. Allah SWT says those people who eat it, they are putting nothing in their stomach except hell. وَأَكْلُ riba And consuming the riba. You know, taking riba. Oh. We already know what is, what is that, you know. The epidemic of this contemporary era. You go out of this business, another will be introduced, you know. You go out of this one, another will be introduced. It will never let you rest. Because the economic system is controlled by others. We don't have our own establishment. It was supposed to be in that way. And don't listen to anyone who tells you it doesn't work. Or we have to go through riba first. Or we have to tolerate riba first. Wallahi, we don't need it. Not a single second we need. We don't. We, we need riba. He said, we, uh, I mean, I can confirm you that we don't need riba in our life. And all of these tragedies that are happening, it's because we condone it, you know. Our economic system is crashing and cracking, you know. And it will never be stable until the time we come back to the correct, you know, position Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala places in terms of economy. We must come back to that. That's the only thing that can save our system. We have to be patient. We have to live according to our limitations and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then Allah will put barakah in it and will put us in the, yeah, uh, in the lead, you know. We will take back the lead in the way we used to be the leaders. So all of those things that are called childish nowadays, you know, but Islam condoned them, we say it's okay. This is actually the basis of the test. To test it to see whether you are accepted or not. And this is where the success lies. If you accept it with respect, you know, don't make fun of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will let you succeed. You go to Mecca, you take stones and throw another wall. You go around the Kaaba, you do all of these things, you know. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these are the essence of the worship in Hajj. And we do believe in that. Although somebody might find them so insignificant, that's up to him, but to us, is the essence of the test to see who will accept and who will make fun of that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks us to do. Is there any benefit in it? Wallahi, there is a lot of benefit, you know. Wisdom behind it and benefit behind it, which we cannot even count how many benefits Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in, in Hajj from A to Z. So Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all about test. And Muslims should understand this, you know. So when it comes to this economic system and <clears throat> financial system, the only thing that can save us is to follow Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala precisely. We just have to do that. We have to remove every single thing that is haram in our business and throw it away. We shouldn't tolerate a single one. The people of the past, they succeed because of that. Look at the way they, they learn. Look at the way they memorize. Look at the way they give the terbiyah to their, to their family members. Why? Because life is based on what? Life is based on acceptance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing none other than which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. He says, son, he was talking to his son, Muhammad bin Ismail. He said, son, I'm going to live for you, you know, I'm going to live for you as inheritance. He says, uh, alf, alf dirham, one million dirham. He said, la a'lamu dirham an fihi shubha. He said, I don't know one single dirham that has doubt in it. Nowadays, we are not talking about doubtful matters, you know. Doubtful matters are very simple in business, you know. We follow things which are clearly haram in Islam and we don't care. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tawfiq wa salama. So as I said, my dear brothers and sisters, what helps you in this regard is none other than the reflection upon the next life, not this one. Don't you ever think about this life so much. Think about the, the next one. Because if you're thinking about the next one, it will help you to fix the present. So, Shurb al Khamru wa Akil Mali Latin wa Akil Riba. These are the three things he found to be committed by the stomach. And he found two things being committed by by what? Uh, by, the, by the private part. Number one is Zina. 
having adultery or fornication uh, and al-liwat al-liwat is the homosexuality so this zina in all of its forms you know that the big one and the small one the homosexuality also the other things that looks like it you know lesbianism you know all of these things which are disease in the heart of some may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remove it from the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and he found two to be committed by the hands wahuma al qatl wa sariqa and these two that are two that are committed by the hands they are theft and al qatl qatl is the murder wa wahidatun fi al rijlayn wa hiya al firar min al zahr and he found one to be committed by the legs what are the uh, the, what is the one that is committed by the leg? al min al running away from the battlefield. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يُوَلِّهِمْ يَوْمَئِذٍ دُبْرَهُ إِلَّا مُتَحَرِّفَ لِكِتَالٍ أَوْ مُتَحَيِّزًا إِلَى فِئَةٍ فَقَدْ بَاءَ بِغَضَبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَأْوَاهُ جَانَّمٍ If a person stays away from the battlefield after the enemy, the enemy meet, you know, uh, with the, the Muslims, you know, as the jihad, the legal jihad, the one that is like the one fought by the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if a Muslim ran away from the battlefield, Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Illa mutahharif al qitalin aw mutahayyiz al ilafiyah." Except somebody who is just planning an ambush for the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa taala, you know, war strategy forces him to run away and then come back and attack again. He has his own plan. This one is okay. Is praised by Allah subhanahu wa taala, or somebody who realizes that he is fighting alone. There is nobody in the area where he is fighting the enemies. So he went to join the Muslims and then attack again. This one also is okay. Other than that, Allah says, فَقَدْ بَاءَ مِنْ غَضَبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَمَأْوَاهُ جَهَنَّمِ It's like he's going back to Jahannam. Imagine at that moment somebody shot him. You know, when somebody shoot him and he dies, you know, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what will happen to him because this is an act that takes a person to hell. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not forgive, that person will go to hell for sure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq. Qala wa wahidatun tata'allaku bi jami'il jasadi wa huwa wa hiya uququ al-walidayn. And the last one he said he found is, uh, is, a, uh, is a sin that is committed by all part of the body and this is the uququ al-walidayn. Uququ al-walidayn uh, going against the parent. Going against the parent. Being disobedient uh, to the parent. <coughs> So this is the approach uh, mentioned by Makki ibn Abi, uh, ibn Abi Talib or Abu Talib al-Makki. This is the approach. He says, I found the, the statements of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, and then I found the vast majority of them mention that they are talking about four things being committed by the heart. You know, and you have four sins being committed by the tongue, and you have three sins being committed by the, by the stomach, and you have two sins being committed by the private part, and you have two sins being committed by the hands, and you have one sin being committed by the leg, and one sin being committed by all part of the body. So this is also another kind of restriction that he found to be, uh, uh, to, to be in existence based on the opinions of the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa but as I said, uh, going with the description is better than numbering, numbering them. Because no matter how much you go, you will find some of the sins not being mentioned in those uh, lists given to us by some of the scholars. وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يَحْصُرُهَا بِعَادَدٍ مِنْهُمْ مَنْ قَالَ كُلُّ مَا نَهَا اللَّهُ عَنْهُ في القرآن فهو كبيرة وما نهى عنه الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم فهو صغيرة. You have another approach that says what I have just mentioned now that they are not restricted uh, to an amount. You know. They're much bigger than what uh, those scholars are mentioning, but they are restricted. They are defined by by their nature. So they also are not in agreement. You know, you have different types of opinions mentioned by those those scholars. Some scholars said كل ما نهى الله عنه في القرآن. Some scholars said, whatever is prohibited by the Quran, this is a major sin. Whatsoever is prohibited by the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, this is a minor sin. What is rejected by the Quran, this is major sin. What is rejected by the Sunnah, this is a minor sin. This is an opinion said by some scholars. 
وقال الطائفة ما اقترن بالنهي عنه وعيد من لعن أو غضب أو عقوبة فهو كبيرة Some scholars said no Whatsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect its prohibition with a curse or anger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, anger from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or kubatin or a punishment from Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever does that we're going to punish him Allah says this is prohibited if you do this you will be punished so whatever has this uh, punishment attached to it or curse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attached to it this is kabira min al-kabair if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about it to be uh, a sin but he did not mention any punishment or any curse you know attached to it this is sagira this is a minor minor sin وَقِيلَ كُلُّ مَا تَرَتَّبَ عَلَيْهِ حَدٌ فِي الدُّنْيَا أَوْ وَعِيدٌ فِي الْآخِرَةَ فَهُوَ كَبِيرًا Some scholars said anything that carries had so we're talking about capital punishment if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribe had you know capital punishment on a person so uh, I mean on, on a sin this is what is called kabira if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if a person does uh, does I mean uh, whoever does this will be punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this kind of punishment and we found that uh, we found out that this punishment is capital <clears throat> then we call the sin being committed by this person to be kabira min al-kabai like what? like committing zina, like committing liwat you know uh, although liwat doesn't have had but zina like theft you know so they said these are all kabai or wa'id, or Allah SWT threatened the one who does it. You know, Allah SWT said to, to them to be very careful. They will be punished by hell. Or Allah SWT prescribed the punishment for it. These are all part of the wa'id. So whoever, whoever commits that kind of sin will be committing a kabira min al-kabail. Wa ma lam yurattab alayhi la hadha wa la hadha fa huwa saghira. Whatsoever is not connected to these type of punishment is a minor sin. وَقِيلَ مَا اتَّفَقَتِ الشَّرَعِ وَعَلَى تَحْرِيمِهِ فَهُوَ مِنَ الْكَبَائِرِ وَمَا كَانَ تَحْرِيمُهُ فِي شَرِيَةٍ دُونَ شَرِيَةٍ فَهُوَ صَغِيرًا And this opinion is very tough because uh, only a few, even among the scholars, only a few will know, uh, will be able to recognize the kabira from the sagira. You know, some scholars said whatsoever, all of this sharia of Allah SWT, every sharia, all of the sharia, you know, the Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he sent from Adam until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If uh, in the Sharia of Adam is haram and the Sharia of Muhammad also is haram, in the Sharia of Nuh also is haram, in all of the Sharia that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophets with, in all of those Sharia Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it prohibited, then this is kabira. But if it is only prohibited in some Sharia and some of the some of the Sharia is not prohibited, then this is Sagira. But as I said, it's a very difficult criteria because even among the scholars, not all the scholars went through the previous books. No. How do you know? You have to go through the previous books. And how do you get the previous books? They have already been missing. So nobody will know what is exactly Kabira from the, from the Sagira. Then the Dhunub Kulluha Takun either Kabira or Sagira. Then all of the sins are going to be either uh, Sagira or Kabira then. But we don't know which one is what, you know. Which one is, is what. وَقِيلَ كُلُّ مَا لَعَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ فَاعِلَهُ فَهُوَ كَبِرًا Some scholars said anything that Allah SWT cursed the one who, de, uh, who does it and the Prophet Allah SWT cursed him, then this is kabira. When you have Allah cursing and Rasulullah cursing, then this is kabira. Kabira means major sin. وَقِيلَ هِيَ كُلُّ مَا ذُكِرَ مِنْ أَوَّلِ سُورَةِ النِّسَاءِ إِلَى قَوْلِهِ إِنْ تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ نُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَنُخِلْكُمْ مِنْ خَلَنْ كَبِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِنْ تَجْتَنِبُوا كَبَائِرَ مَا تُنْهَوْنَ عَنْهُ in Surah An-Nisa so some scholars said anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah An-Nisa from the beginning of this uh, the, 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 from the beginning of the surah until the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in tajtanibu kaba'ira ma'atina hana anhu is around uh, uh, five to six pages Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discuss issues the sins such as taking from the wealth of the orphan, orphan you know and uh, 
committing injustice against the wives and not distributing the inheritance in the way it should be done, marrying from the maharim, you know, marrying the wives of your your parents, you know, all of these sins. So some scholars said these are uh, any sin that is mentioned in the surah from the beginning until the ayah that says in tajtanibu kabaira anhu. If you stay away from the major sin that Allah SWT make uh, made prohibited upon you, the kafir ankum sayyatikum, we will forgive the minor, the minor one. The other, the other evil ones. So that's ayah number 31 in Surah An-Nisa. So whatever comes after that, then it's not, it's not kabira. This is another, another approach. وَالَّذِينَ لَمْ يُقَسِّمُهَا إِلَى كَبَائِرَ وَصَغَائِرَ قَالُوا أَذْنُبُ كُلُّهَا بِالنِّسْبَةِ إِلَى الْجَرَاءَةِ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَمَعْصِيَتِهِ وَمُخَالَفَةِ أَمْرِهِ كَبَائِرَ And you have another approach that people did uh, I mean who did not you know divide the sins into kabair and sagair? There is another approach which says actually we don't even go we don't call it kabira or sagira. So how did he look at the sins then? They said we relate them to the nature of the person who is committing the sin. What pushed him to commit those sins? Al jara'a. You know, is to have the, the the courage, you know, to go against something or to do something. The courage and the ability, you know, and you know you shouldn't do it, but then you have the courage of doing it, you know. So we look at the person who is doing that, who is committing that sin. What, what you know, you know push him to commit that sin? This will be the, the basis of our classification. We call the sins kabair. Because this is really a jura Allah Azza You know that Allah SWT says you shouldn't do, but you still do it. This is what jara means. Your father says don't do, and you do it in front of him. We call it jura. It means you show no respect to him. You are trying to send a message to him that yes, you're ready for anything. You don't care about his command, you know. So, so Ibn Qayyim says there are some scholars who said we just look at the nature of the person who is committing the sin. How did he? How is he committing that sin? He knows that it is prohibited, but he still does it, and he doesn't care. He said, "Bin nisbati ila jara'ati ala Allahi wa ma'asiyatihi wa mukhalafati amrihi kabair." فَالنَّظَرُ إِلَى مَنْ عَصَى أَمْرَهُ so for them, all of the sins are kabair. Why? Because they said if you look at those people who are committing the sins intentionally, you will definitely believe that those people, they know exactly what they are doing and they don't care about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if they do care, why, why would they commit the sin, you know? If they care about the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why are they committing the sin? So they are all equal. To them, the sins are all equal. In terms of the result they produce, any sin that somebody is committing, as long as he knows what he's doing and he is doing it intentionally, the result is the same. It carries disrespect against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the day. They said, if you want to understand this correctly, you should understand that Allah SWT doesn't get affected by the sins. You commit sin, you don't commit sin, Allah SWT doesn't benefit with your righteousness. Allah doesn't benefit from your righteousness and He doesn't benefit from your, I mean, He doesn't get harmed by your evil attitude. As the Prophet says, لَوْ أَنَّ إِنسَكُمْ مَجِنَّكُمْ and this is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually in the hadith al qudsi لَوْ أَنَّ إِنسَكُمْ مَجِنَّكُمْ أَوَّلَكُمْ وَآخِرَكُمْ إِنسَكُمْ مَجِنَّكُمْ كَانُوا عَلَىٰ أَتْقَى قَلْبِ رَجِلٍ وَاحِدٍ You know, if we are all having the same heart, which is the heart of obedience, we obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we don't go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of us are like that. All of us are pious. That will never benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanAllah. If all of us are righteous people, it will never benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His kingdom will never increase because of our righteousness. And the same goes to when we are all bad, it will never harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our bad manners will never harm Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So these 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 uh, uh, scholars they said, just look at the, uh, the 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 nature of the sins when you relate them to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Allah doesn't get harmed. You know, what I tell Thurbiya will never be affected by the sins of the sinners. فَلَا يَكُونُ بَعْضُهَا بِالنِّسْبَةِ إِلَيْهِ أَكْبَرُ مِنْ بَعْضُ So they said, if this is the case then, why some of them are big to him? If you, related, if you relate them to Allah, then that is nothing called big sin or minor sin because Allah doesn't get affected by the sins. Do you get what they're trying to say? You know, if, if, if you relate them to the human beings, yes, some of them, the impact is so big in the community and some of them, the impact is very, very low. The impact of smoking cigarette is not as bad as the impact of the wine, for instance. Taking riba, for instance. Yet the impact of smoking cigarette is not as bad as the impact of uh, 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 zina, for instance, or cheating, you know. So that's when you relate them to humankind. But when you relate them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah doesn't get harmed by any sin. So the result is the same. This is an approach by some scholars. The result is, is the same. فَلَمْ يَبْقَ إِلَّا مُجَرَّدَ مَا عَصِيَتِهِ وَمُخَالَفَتِهِ وَلَا فَرْقَ فِي ذَلِكَ بَيْنَ ذَنْبٍ وَذَنْبٍ So that nothing left except the name and the title, sin. You know, and going against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They said, this is, this is what left, you know, committing sin, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. And there is no difference between a sin and a sin. Because to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sins are sins. They are things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't like. And it's as simple as that. But honestly speaking, you know, it will kind of continue. And we're going to go through that which he says. But the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and the Quran both are indicating that there are something called kaba'il zunub. You know, very clearly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned intajtanibu kaba'ira ma tunahonanu. If you stay away from the major sins, and the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, the akbar al kaba'ir, the greatest major sins, you know, that means they are kaba'ir. The word itself also signifies what? You know, indirectly you understand that yes, there are in existence sins which are not described as the kaba'ir, and the opposite of the kaba'ir are the sagha'ir. قالوا ويوضح هذا قالوا ويدل عليه أن مفسدة الذنوب إنما هي تابعة للجراءة والتوثب على حق الرب عز وجل. He says also what help us to understand that fact which they are mentioning this opinion. Uh, he's still talking about this opinion, the last one. He says you can you can see the evil consequence of the sins is the result of that jura. A jura I translate an intentional you know, violation of the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you don't care. You know that this is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You violate it, you don't care. This is, this is what we call jara. I don't have a single word for it, so I give you the meaning of jara. This is what jara means. You know that it's wrong to way to do it. You know that you're not supposed to go for it. But unfortunately, you have the courage to go against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not worrying. You know, you don't care about the punishment or what kind of action Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be taken against you. He says it follows the jara'ah that a person has with and domination of the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know that this is the right of Allah and you don't have a right to take it, but you go against it. وَلِهَذَا لَوْ شَرِبَ رَجُلٌ خَمْرًا أَوْ وَطِئَ فَرْجًا حَرَامًا وَهُوَ لَا يَعْتَقِلُ تَحْرِيمَهُ لَكَانَ قَدْ جَمَعَ بَيْنَ الْجَهَلِ وَبَيْنَ مَفْسَدَ تِرْتِكَابِ الْحَرَامِ he said, that's why if you find somebody who drank wine, or he uh, committed, you know, uh, adultery, you know, he committed zina with a person that he is not supposed to commit that zina, but he doesn't believe it is haram. And when we say, we're not talking about the ayah already came to him and he doesn't agree with that. No, we're talking about an ignorant person. He never knew that this is haram for him. Please do understand this uh, statement correctly. He is talking about an ignorant person, somebody who is not aware of the prohibition. He did not see that place. He never come across where Allah SWT mentioned this to be haram. So he drank wine. He thought it's okay to drink wine. 
he never been taught by anyone that this is not okay. He married his own sister. He thought it's okay to do that. Nobody ever told him that this is wrong. So this guy is combining between two mafsada. Number one is the mafsada to jahal, ignorance, and also going against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it was out of ignorance. He did not do it intentionally. These are the kind of people that if they know this is wrong, they will not do. But he's not aware of the prohibition. وَلَوْ فَعْلَ ذَلِكَ مَنْ يَعْتَقِدُ تَحْرِيمَهُ لَكَانَ آتِيًا بِإِحْدَ الْمَفْسَدَتَيْنِ And if somebody believes that it is haram, and he knows that this is haram, he knows. But he did it. How many mafsada he did? He committed two, uh, one, only one. That one committed two. Jahl, ignorance, and also the sin itself. But this one is only one. But since the sin of the first person was based on ignorance, and the sin of the second person was based on jura ala Allah Azza wa Jal, he knows there is no ignorance in his, in, in his case, but he intentionally goes against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa huwa alladhi yastahiqqu al-uqubat al-duna al-awwal. Fa huwa alladhi yastahiqqu al-uqubat al-duna al-awwal. The one who deserves punishment is the second person, not the first one. Because Islamically, when somebody does something out of ignorance, if ignorance is possible in his case, that person is not going to be punished. Meaning, if you find somebody, meaning if you find somebody who, uh, uh, let's say in Ramadan, he drank water, and then when we, when we ask him, why did he drink water in the in the day of Ramadan? He said, why can't I drink water in the day of Ramadan? What's wrong with that? You know. We told him, didn't you know that you cannot drink water if you have fasted? He said, no, nobody told me this. I thought the prohibition is only on saying bad words and also not eating food, but I can drink water. Yeah, we look at this person, we found him living in the village, you know, village that they have no access to the scholars, you know. We don't punish this person and his fasting is correct and is intact. We just tell him from now onward, do not eat. And he doesn't need to repeat the fast also again. Why? Because of his, because the action he committed was based on ignorance of the hukum. Yeah, we have to differentiate here between the ignorance of the hukum and the ignorance of the punishment. We found somebody who stole something, and uh, when we talked to him, he said, Wallahi, this is the first th time, the first time somebody ever told me that it is harm for me to take it. I thought we are all partners, you know, and, and, and shareholders, you know. I thought I do have a right to use it, you know. When I see my brother is not using it, I thought he doesn't need it anymore. And nobody ever told me this, that Islamically is harm for me to take something that doesn't belong to me. And we look at him, we found out, yes, this person can, yeah, I mean, this situation is possible in him. Because he lives in a place where there is no access to the knowledge. There is no punishment on him. We just warn him, we tell him not to do that again. But if another person comes and he took somebody else's property, but when the government comes to cut off his hand, he says, no, why are you doing this? Because I don't know that if I do this, I know it is haram, but I never know that if I do it, I will lose my hand. Because if I know that I'm going to lose my hand, I will never do it, I will never do it at all. The government has to cut off his hand. Because his ignorance is based on the hukum. He was supposed to stay away from that which Allah doesn't like, even if he doesn't know the punishment. It is not a condition that you must know the punishment for you to stay away from things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't like. So things that Allah SWT does not like, you know, we are supposed to stay away from them even if we don't know the, the punishment. So this is very important, like very important information, you know. But as I said, ignorance has to be the one that is tolerated. You know, because if you live in a city, for instance, somebody who is living in UI, and he tells us he doesn't know, no, the authority shouldn't let him go. He has to be punished. Somebody who lives in KL, somebody who lives in any capital city where the access to the scholars is possible, this person has no, has no excuse at all. Ignorance doesn't work. 
And the same goes to the person who is smart and he has the ability to contact the scholars either through the phone or through wherever he can contact them. This person doesn't have an excuse to go against the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even the first one doesn't have an excuse, but we give him that excuse because he doesn't know. He never knew that he's committing the sin. But the person who knew, knew that he's committing the sin and he does it, these are the people that have to receive the punishment from, from the authorities. قال فدل على أن مفسرة الذنب تابعة للرجوعة والتوثب They said this shows that the evil consequence of the sins is always based on the nature of the sinner what makes him commit that sin what kind of intention does he has if it is a person who knows that this is wrong but he still do it against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he doesn't care about whatever consequence is going to take place this is how we measure you know <clears throat> and level the sins. We call it kabira if we relate it to the nature of the person and his intention when he is committing that sin. So as I said, on Monday I have another uh, commitment so I will have a short class. So I will stop here. I have only 10 minutes left for questions. Inshallah, if there is any question from anyone, please do come up with it. Barakallahu feekum. Abdurrahman, I pass back to you the mic. I mean, what year? Sheikh, uh, I don't see any questions now. Yeah, because people forgot that we are stopping the class early today. Sheikh, there's a question by Thoban hmm. uh, saying some people use the part of the hadith that says La Adwa to say that COVID is fake. How do they advise them? Well, that's wrong. The, the best way to advise them is to tell them to go to school. <laughs> to go to school and learn the way to interpret the hadith of the Prophet. He says, La adwa. At the same time, also in some other places, he says, Firra min al majdhumi, firaraka min al asad. He said, Stay away from somebody who is uh, suffering from leprosy in the way you run away from a lion. So, whoever says that COVID uh, is not a reality, then we have seen what we see. And they use the hadith of the Prophet, La adwa. This is wrong. It's wrong. It's a reality. And adwa. Yeah, to have this infection, to be infected by a disease because you have a contact with somebody, this is a fact. And the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ did not reject that actually. So if we advise that person, we tell him to go to school. Yeah, uh, something might be conspiracy, but it doesn't mean that there are, there are no disease that transfer from a person to a person when you, con when you have direct contact with those people who are infected by it. No, that's wrong wrong understanding of the Sharia. There are diseases which a person is not supposed to come, up, to come closer to the person who is, who is infected by those diseases. Because if you do, you might uh, get them coming to you. So that hadith is, is true. There are, it shows that there are some diseases that are not like that and there are other diseases which are, which are like that. Hmm. And it helps us to stay away from exaggeration because sometimes uh, some people when they are sick, you know, they don't have much care from the family. People are afraid of coming closer to them. Although the doctors tell us that this disease, they are not uh, contagious, you know, they don't transfer from a person to another person. But still, we have this sensitivity sometimes in terms of coming, to, coming closer to a sick person. As such, you will be neglected, you know, and that will increase, increase the psychological punishment. And the healing process will, will be very, very low. Yeah. So these two hadiths are supposed to put all together and then to 
uh, lets you understand that you have to contact the doctors, you know, and ask them. That's what we should do, you know. So any sin, uh, I'm sorry, any, any disease, when you don't know, then talk to somebody who knows. She lives behind who? One full brother and okay. three full sisters. Yeah. No, there is no Baitul Mal. They will take the inheritance. If she doesn't leave anyone except those ones, uh, of course, the inheritance will go to the, uh, those four entities. So you divide the wealth, whatever he left, you divide it by five. Therefore, right? You divide it by five. You give the brother two, and each sister you give her one, one. That's the Karim There is no single portion for the Bayt al -Mal. According to the best opinion, if a person dies and he left, he left nobody except his wife, she takes the whole thing. Uh, she left nobody except the husband. Everyone in her family is gone. She's the only one who remains. But she has a husband. The husband takes the whole thing. A rudd will be given to him, not to the Bayt al-Mal. Al-Kharaj bi daman wal bil ghurmi In the way when it comes to awl, we, we take from the husband, we take from the wife. So when it comes to the benefit also, we should benefit them. Unless if there is a sunnah from the Prophet ﷺ that says otherwise. So that's the best opinion, insha'Allah ta'ala. There is no Bayt al-Mal. Bayt al-Mal will come into uh, existence, you know, when there is nobody in the family. Then we go to Bayt al-Mal. That's why, according to the best opinion, even if there are no legal heir, you know, among the list, we have 25 of them. If none of them exist, but we have the Dawul uh, Maharim, you know, Dawul Arham, you know, we have the Dawul Arham like the son of a daughter. The son of a daughter doesn't inherit. Uh, but if there is nobody from the legal heirs, he will be the inheritor. We give him the whole thing. We don't take it to the Bayt al Mal. Jazakallah khairan Khalid. Yes, Abdurrahman. Uh, question by Wazir. Assalamu alaikum. Can one build a well as a waqf with the intention of it being for all the Muslims? Yeah, can. Even like a zawjah. Inshallah. That shows that the heart of this person is really pure and clean towards the believers. SubhanAllah. So, that's why it's really good from time to time make dua for the believers. It's good. It helps you to clean your heart, you know, from this yeah, attitude, you know, uh, bad attitude of manners, you know, towards your Muslim brothers and sisters. Uh, and Sheikh. Can he even include the dead ones? Yes, can. It's possible, inshallah. I think that's the last question, inshallah. Okay, then, Jazakumullah uh, uh, khairan. There's some, something right? No. Okay, I, st I still have four minutes, yeah. Okay. Wait, question is for Isha. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. is asking, what are we? human form. Is it semen or is it clay? What are? Uh, he's asking the origin of human being. Of, no, the, origin. Uh, the origin of human being is clay. But from that clay Allah will to turn it into human being. And then after that, every generation that comes from that first human being who was Adam, who was created from the clay, and his wife was created from him, you know, uh, uh, and he is from the clay. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talk about this and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa talk about this. He is from the clay. So the source and the origin of human being is clay. But then after that, whoever is generated after him, coming from him, we come from the semen. You know, the sperm. 
that's that's how it is so we have those who came from the uh, we have the one that came from the clay and the rest are coming from the from the water that's the semen may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you and your child success and knowledge mm. No, what, what the Prophet talks about is Musafaha. Musafaha is a shake hand. Hmm. So the ajr is restricted to that. Well, that's what I believe in. The ajr is restricted to shaking hands, not hitting the things. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I think that's the last song. I don't see any more questions. Okay. Even if there is a question, I think we have forfeited our time. So, Barakallahu Fikum. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you good and be with you wherever you are and protect you from this uh, pandemic. Innahu bi kulli jameelin kafeel. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.